Okay, everybody, I'm back. Um, parents are taken care of. Father is eating his breakfast and such. So, here I am. I'm on the Wikipedia page for Ralph Waldo Emerson's Transparent Eyeball. And this is really relevant to our discussion of grades and to our future analysis of language. Um, so if you're familiar with it, here's, here it is. But here's kind of the passage we're looking at. And I think we're just going to start right here. My head bathed by blithe air and uplifted into infinite spaces. All mean egotism vanishes. I become a transparent eyeball. I am nothing. I see all. The currents of the universal being circulate through me. I am part and particle of God. And uh, so he's getting at the, the symbolic process here. And, you know, egotism vanishes. So basically, as consumers of language, language can be words, text, images, what have you, right? Um, all language that we encounter changes who we are as humans. So, me, for example, I am a, a student, a scholar of rhetoric and writing, so even when I read literature, I see it as a, as a rhetorician you know, as a writing expert. I see something different than maybe one of my literature colleagues. They're going to see that text as a literary person. A British literature scholar is going to see it different than a world literature scholar or a medieval literature scholar. So all of our language encounters affect who we are. And so what Emer Emerson is saying here is wouldn't it be great um, and this is an illustration over here by Christopher Pierce Cranch but Emerson's saying you know wouldn't it be great if I could just be this eyeball and I could take in everything without all of my language experiences affecting who I am as a person or as a consumer of language and that would then bring us back to even Plato and Plato saying oh I wish language could be soul communicating to soul right so our words our symbols wouldn't get in the way okay so it's great great concept here so you kind of have this symbolic process here and um, so uh maybe down here this is just an x this is probably the best drawing of a fly i have ever seen so so then you know we have a uh, drawn like flies right actual flies in the world and uh maybe that's fly one fly two fly three so we have a fly, and so so there's a referent. What's what's being um, you know observed, right? So so there it is, and then you know the, this person through his eyeballs sees the fly, and then in his in the brain um, there's an impression: a fly. It must be dirty here, but that's not even accurate because right here I've just applied symbols to what's happening in that brain but so there's this act of observation going on here you know and then maybe the person says fly and and so here's the the symbol right and this is these are these are also symbols um I, I think I read somewhere that there's something like a hundred thousand different species of flies and uh, so it's just to say fly is wrong because fly one is not fly two is not fly three every fly is different 
and then every circumstance in which they're observed is different right so so then we could have a uh, student work professor's eyeball up here grading it and then a grade and so what happened is this essay maybe I should draw a brain too was just run through this symbol processing machine in an out output a volume or a, a value text to process ah but text one is not text two right so the b is highly subjective symbol of, you know applied to a process so so we could even say well Here's a B in all of its description. Here's the brain again. And then here's the B applied in, in real life. So when uh, you think about, when we think about something like a grade on, an, on a test, you know, you can ask, what is the B-ness of that test? I don't know. You tell me. What is the Venus? Because we know, because Emerson was saying he wished all of the symbolic process could be wiped clean from his body. Because even if me, as a professor, as a skilled consumer of language, someone who teaches other people how to consume language, when I read a definition of a B, it's going to be different than... If I talk to my office partner, Dr. Raman, and say, hey, you tell me about this B. Let's grade a bunch of essays together. And you know what? We're going to have a bunch of disagreements where we give different grades because of our thought process here, you know, transferring what's been written down. And actually, when uh, sometimes when we've had like uh, we used to have a writing proficiency exam. Every student had to take this exam and faculty would grade it. And then I would get samples of the student exams that represent different scores and get all the faculty graders in a room. They'd read the, the exams, apply the scores, and then we we discuss what they've said. And I would tell them, well, this is what, you know, this is a four, this is a five, this is a six. I would tell them, you know, this is why each um, essay is a certain score to try to socialize everybody to get them to use that same symbolic process. And let me tell you, there were nearly fist fights, there were tons of tears, and there was yelling because people were so adamant about their own interpretations of, a, of the rubric that I made to try to dispel, dispel any interpretations. And so, so this is, you know, how the symbolic process works. Um, you know, if I were to say consumerism today, we'd be like, oh yeah, consumerism, buying and selling more goods is preferable. If I were to say consumerism 200 years ago, it would be like, oh yeah, we have to protect consumers from the, the greedy corporations. So the word has changed over time. So no word, no idea is set in stone. My reality is not your reality. Um, you know, when I divorced my second wife, you know, my thing is, is I told her, I'm like, it's not even that we share different realities. We weren't even in the same universe.